detectives and welcome to a very special day for me. It is publication day at last for my new book, A Spoonful of Murder in the UK and Ireland. Of course, it will come out in other countries too very soon, like Australia and South Africa. It is coming soon if you live in one of those countries, but if you are in the UK or Ireland, today is the big day and it is officially out. So you can go into any bookstore, go online and buy it. In this book, Hazel and Daisy have to deal with a mystery that is very close to home. Something terrible goes wrong in Hazel's family. And when a crime is committed, she is not just the detective, she is one of the suspects. So this story is even more exciting, even more dangerous than any story I have written before. I loved telling it. I really hope you love reading it as well. Because today is publication day for A Spoonful of Murder, I thought I would give you a special treat. I thought I would read to you from it. I'm going to read to you from the middle of the book. This is part of my very favourite section of A Spoonful of Murder. This is the part when Daisy and Hazel escape from Hazel's house and they go running through Hong Kong in the middle of the night with a boy that they meet who becomes part of their adventures. They are on a very deadly, very dangerous mission to discover one of the suspects in the case and see if they can rule that suspect out. Get out, said Arlan. He said it in English for Daisy. I sat up and Daisy did too. And for a moment, we stared at each other. The whites of Daisy's eyes were pale in the dark, but her hair was still hidden under its wrap. Where do we go? I whispered to Arlan. We had come to a stop next to a high stone wall with a tree cutting down the middle of it, its roots wriggling into the stones. Up, said Arlan briefly gesturing. Over the wall is the house we are going to. We need to get up high and then look through that window. I will show you. It's always kept a little open and through it you can hear everything. All right? My heart sunk, but Daisy said, oh good, climbing. Why is it always climbing? I said, wherever we go. Stop complaining, Hazel, or you'll have no breath left to climb, said Daisy with a wink. And she seized hold of the lowest root and began to scamper up the wall as balanced and sure-footed as a monkey. She's done this before, said Alan approvingly. Go on. I winced, for I knew that I was about to disappoint him very much. I put my hand on the same root Daisy had, its bark scratching my palm, and began to haul myself up. My heart pounded, and I tried not to look down. Daisy, perched above me, whispered cheerful encouragement, mixed in with criticisms about my choice of branches that I could have done without. Sweating, I finally pulled myself up beside her at the top of the wall and looked down the dizzying perspective below us to see Arlan swinging himself towards us, kicking off with his legs, seizing branches with his right arm and using his left to steady himself. Honestly, Hazel, he's far better at it than you, Daisy muttered in my ear. You must apply yourself if you want to get ahead. Shush, I said to her as rudely as I dared, or someone will hear. In another minute, Arlan was up beside us, the three of us teetered at the top of the wall. I breathed out, trying to calm my nerves and stop the spinning in my head. I really am still not good with heights, despite all of Daisy's attempts to cure me. And Arlan pointed down below. There was a courtyard leading to a tall warehouse that looked quite old and uninhabited. In fact, I was almost wondering whether Arlan had brought us to the wrong place when I saw two figures appearing from the shadows at the other side of the courtyard and walking silently up to the building's main door. The first figure knocked a pattern of five long and short raps. There was a pause, then a bolt was drawn back. The three of us listening all heard it, and Daisy nudged me so hard that I almost fell off the wall. I was born poor, said the first figure below us, but at least I still have the five fingers of my right hand, said the other. There was a pause, and I could tell that someone inside was speaking. I died once, said the first figure. Stabbed five times by a jade pin, agreed the second. I gasped. What is it? hissed Daisy. What are they saying? Oh, this is infuriating. They're talking about a jade pin, I told her. It's just the password, hissed Alan. It doesn't mean anything. This is the house of the five jade figures. But in the dark, in a place that I did not know, on a mission that, I was beginning to see, was not only more illegal, but more dangerous than any we'd been on before, I was not so sure. With a clank, the door below opened and the two figures disappeared inside. Come on, whispered Arlan. Nothing more to see here. We have to go to the window. He stood up in a half crouch and led us along the wall and then up a gable and onto the building's roof. 
We stepped across tiles using hands and feet to steady ourselves. And at last, it seemed like an eternity, came to a little skylight, a window that was slightly open. I peered down into it, and this is what I saw. So that is all I'm going to read to you from A Spoonful of Murder. As I say, that is from one of my favourite bits, one of the most exciting bits in the book. I loved writing it. I loved writing this story. And I really hope you enjoy reading it. If you've bought it this week, please do tell me about it. If you enjoyed it, please do let me know. I would love to hear what you think. Thank you so much for waiting so patiently. And the wait is finally over. A Spoonful of Murder is out today.